Last Friday, there was a student council meeting at school. Now, that's not the way I've ever seen it done in the U.S. This student council actually did all the arrangements. They set up the meeting, they took down notes, they even published a little book talking about the budget and what they were going to discuss at the student meeting. It was really impressive. I was really, really amazed by the fact that the kids were able to manage their budget uh, they were talking about money that had come in from last year's student council, how much they'd raised, where they were spending it, the whole deal. Really responsible, a bunch of kids that are, well, I mean, let's face it, middle school students. I know in the U.S. we won't trust a 12 or 13 year old with money, but here, not so big a deal. The whole school is there, all the students, the student council, most of the staff. And just about halfway through the meeting, a yokai slipped in sort of covered in mist and uh, dripping, something that was kind of like black and ichor. I could hear one of the teachers near me complaining about it. I'm not sure the specifics, but I think they were objecting to the, the mess that it was making on the floor. We don't wear shoes into the gymnasium because it's just too, they, they need to keep the floor really clean. So if you don't know what a yokai is, it's, uh, it's basically like a monster, uh, demonish kind of thing. Very common in Japanese folklore. And, you know, apparently, especially at older schools, uh, they just, they turn up sometimes. And it was carrying in very small, pale hands, a, sort of a shiny apple. You know, if you know your mythology elsewhere, you'll know that golden apples, they show up all over the place. So anyway, the, the yokai rolls the apple into the middle of the room. Um, it kind of rolls between two big groups of students. And the thing hisses, and it says something, and, you know, I'm sort of looking around. As often happens for me, I just kind of have to go with the flow. Since I don't speak any Japanese myself, I'm always at the mercy of, so as, uh, you know, for someone to translate for me. As it happened, I was sitting near one of the English teachers who took pity on me. And she leaned over and said that it, the, the yokai had said that a terrible curse would fall on anyone who picked up the apple and that we needed to decide who deserved to pick up the apple most. At that point, Kyoto sensei or the vice principal, got up and he kind of yelled at everyone for, um, you know, for getting distracted. He then got some of the teachers together, had them herd the students in the student council out to finish their meeting, from what I understand. And that just left me and some auxiliary teachers standing around looking at this apple. And then, so this is a phenomenon that happens, I've noticed a lot, when important decisions need to be made, or not so important decisions so much as any decision. The Japanese are, you know, very culturally trained to work as groups. No matter the circumstances, working as a group is very common. And as a result, you will often see any issue, any bump in the normal status, you know, in the normal order, will result in a number of, of people gathering together and standing around discussing the issue for a really long time. You know, to an American standard, it's kind of frustrating, or it could be frustrating, because it seems like they're just standing around talking. Instead of one person just doing something, it's a group of people standing there discussing it. I've actually grown to see a kind of beauty in this interaction, because it, it doesn't matter the status of people there. In this particular case, standing around this apple, I was kind of included in the group of people who were standing around discussing it. Now, I wasn't discussing anything, I was just sort of standing there, nodding my head and saying hi every now and again. Basically, people were taking turns. The, the secretary would gesture at the apple and gesture kind of away from the group of teachers and away from the school. I think she was indicating that we should maybe call someone in to take care of the thing. Uh, Kyoto Sensei seemed very ardent that it was a matter that we could take care of internally. There's a, there's a, he's not a janitor, he's a, like a fix-it guy. He wears a, you know, like a rag on his head and he's kind of a tough guy, older tough guy. And, uh, he, he was sort of joking with the guy next to him about what to do with the apple. Very quickly, they discluded me from being the person to pick up the apple. Maybe, I think they were mentioning because I have kids. Also, I'm a foreigner, so it wasn't really my responsibility to pick up the apple, which was cool. Very kind of them. And then they were, they were sort of discussing if any of them were, you know, particularly ill or old or, or that sort of thing. And then finally, after really putting through the paces the possibilities of who should pick up the apple, who shouldn't pick up the apple, Kyoto said, say, said something. Everybody nodded and said hi, and they, they bowed. Then the secretary went off 
and the fix-it guy went off and they came back a little bit later. She draped a tea towel over the apple. The fix-it guy put up a couple of little the orange cones that tell you not to go there. So they put up a little perimeter up around the apple and then I was basically told to go back to the teacher's room. That was it. That that was how they handled the terrible death apple. I imagine they'll call in experts or they, they won't. They'll just leave it there. But it was pretty interesting to see the way that they manage problems. My, my understanding is student council meeting went really well. They're really good kids and I, again I can't believe how well they manage money and make arrangements. It's really cool to see them preparing the kids really early. You know, really early for real work, real responsibility. I don't know about the yokai. I, I kind of tried to ask a little bit about it, but with some things traditionally, when you ask the Japanese about that, they they tilt their heads to the side and they don't really totally answer rather than telling you something totally negative from my experience. Hopefully I won't see it again, but I'll let you know if I do. Some of the things in this story are true. Okay, thanks.